something a little different today. Make this thing go away again. No, not so much. The pop out, pop back in. Let's do it. What is going on with this broadcasting stuff, huh? Omelette, you're screwing us up here. I can't even share this unless I go to the YouTube. How am I supposed to interact? All right, let's just give this a whirl. So set this up a little different today. We're going to use the new Aerofly FS2020. We're going to fly an approach into Los Angeles, 25 left. Um, basically, the idea is to show you how the Airbus characteristic speeds work. That would be green dot, F, and S speeds. And I said those backwards. It's actually green dot, S, F, and then VLS and V app. VLS is basically VREF in Airbus language. Will this do this for me now? No, nope. still doesn't want to let me share it or interact, so I apologize for that. It's just an omelet bug. I don't know if I need to delete it and reinstall it. But anyways, so we're going to fly on into LAX. I've got it positioned at 16,000 feet uh, on the arrival. Aerofly is a little weird. They don't let you really program the... Um, MCDU and FMGS to really do it, but it is a faithful representation of Airbus. So we're going to talk about how to transfer this kind of knowledge, Airbus knowledge, into infinite flight. It works pretty well most of the time. So I'm going to pop in Aerofly here. I should have restart the whole thing, but we'll see how this does. Uh, the graphics are great. Uh, there are buildings, but it's very limited as far as locations and navigation. Okay. So we're in the A320, and I happen to select the Delta A320 for my good buddy, Mr. Mr. Man. That's right, Ethan. We did that. Delta, Delta Spirit right there for you. So I'll show you here. Location, 16,000 feet, coming in on the arrival to Los Angeles, okay? So I'm going to hit start. Give it the calibrate. And, oh, by the way, there's clouds. I'm going to just punch the autopilot right in, okay? And we probably need to get down, so I'm going to set 10,000. I did it wrong already. All right, I'm going to set 10,000 in here. We're at 300 knots. I'm going to go ahead and check the performance. See that? Activate approach phase. I'm going to just go ahead and get into the wind. It's 304 at 7. All right, temps 15. It's going to be a config full landing. Barrow, it's going to be actually going to be radio height 200 for minimums. So, as you can see here, green dot is 194 knots. So, we will not put the first notch of flaps or slats down until, until we hit, let's get this set up for the United States here, until we hit. Sure, I can think. Until we hit. There we go. ECAM actions. All right. So, until we hit. Oh, boy. No, nope, not that. That. There we go. So, you can see here, we've got our top of descent point there. You can actually take this off and put the constraints on. And it's looking for us to be 2,000 feet and 210 knots. But we're going to be actually in approach mode or approach phase prior to that. So our approach perf is set. Let me just get it cost index so we get a fast descent here. do I need to do? Perf. Manage 300 knots. And cruise. Let me just actually set that. 160. I need to do 
no, nope, not going to let me do that either. There's a lot of things it won't let you do. So I'm going to pre-select 10,000 feet here. And as you can see, we're coming over the mountains in uh, Southern California. Beautiful scenery. Photo reel. And as soon as we get over this this part of the mountains, we should see Ontario here in front of us. We're just a little bit south of the Hector Vortac, or Hector VOR. And if I put station... Yeah, you can see Hector there behind us. I basically set up the arrival into LA. So we're about 75 miles from touchdown. But the big thing I want to focus on here is this activate approach phase, right? Once I go to activate the approach phase, what it's going to do is it's going to target 194 knots, okay? When I hit 194 knots and I put the first notch of flaps down, or the slats out, it's then going to target S speed, or 181 knots. And then, once I go to flaps 3, it'll target 141. And then when I go to flaps full, it'll target VAP or my approach speed, right? There's Victorville, the boneyard, out to our right. Victorville might have been the alternate that it put in. So as you can see, this is a fun... Landing lights are off, strobe lights are on, wing lights. Just kind of cycle through a couple of views here. It's, uh... Pretty good for a mobile sim. Uh, you know, the limitations are there, of course. Um, the scenery's great. Lens flare, if you like that kind of thing. Are the strobes actually on? Yep. Uh, what I do is I usually... Usually... Great. I usually set up the co-pilot's view to control the speed brakes here. Because we may need some. We'll just put uh, 23, 45. Are we squawking? Yep, T-A-R-A. -A. I mean, there's a lot of buttons that don't do anything, but uh, this all works. The ECAM works. Right, take off config if you're on the ground, that works. It's pretty freaking cool, actually. Uh, it never actually gets rid of fuel for you. So there's so there's that. Uh, flight controls work. The auto trim works. Uh, the rudder is very sensitive. Um, status is good. And recall, nothing there. All right, where are we? Coming up on top of climb, or top of descent, rather. So let's go back to the pilot mode here. Okay, so now we're going to push for managed descent. And you're going to see the vertical deviation, or the yo-yo, a little green dot, show up on the altitude meter. Okay. So, descent, out blue. It's going to give me a speed limit to work with here. All right. Thrust idle. Okay, now if I want to speed up my descent, and now we're just going to come out of the clouds, shows that we're going to be at 10,000 at Crean, which is actually where you're supposed to be. <clears throat> and if you notice, see this little uh, magenta circle? That's the decel to 250 knots. Now we're pretty much right on track. Might be a little below track, but the plane's going to basically adjust itself. And it's going to pitch if I go ahead and throw out some spoilers. 
it's going to pitch down, or it should pitch down. See the auto trim working there? It should increase my rate of descent. Nope, it's going to just give me caution, speed brakes are out. So if I do open descent, it's going to thrust, put the thrust, it's going to put the auto thrust back into speed mode. So I obviously need to do an open descent here. And it's going to pitch down and pick up 300 knots. And I'm going to give it some speed brakes because I'm behind the, behind the eight ball here. So we've intercepted the descent path again. Two ninety, and then once we hit this magenta circle right here on the nav display it's going to go ahead and slow us to 250 automatically because we're in managed speed so I'm going to go ahead and we're a little above the descent path now I'm going to switch back to speed descent out blue and now watch speed's going to drop now Auto thrust speed. And when it hits that magenta target, it's going to decel. Thrust idle. Descent out. And you can see that the yo yo is right on target. Okay, as we cross this, it should bring us right back to 250. There it is, looking for 250. So let's get some speed brakes out. See, the plane automatically knows you need to slow before you get to a descent, before you get to 10,000. No violations here in this simulator. So now we're pretty much over the hill, as it were. I'm going to set 2,000 in the altitude window. And you can see on the bottom here, 2130s come up as a constraint take a look take a look quickly at the spoilers pretty good graphics I don't know why it's descending oh I didn't push that's why I mean, there we go caught the descent path Now, see, it's applying thrust here because you're in speed mode and it's looking for that constraint. So it's going to look for 250. This little uh, lightning bolt, that's when you intercept the descent path. So we're back on the descent path. Now it's going to go thrust idle. And we are about, probably about 40 miles to touchdown. Yep. Bring on a little bit of speed brakes here. Try to get that going down. Once I hit 8,000, oh, <clears throat> and hold the turnoffs till we go gear down. Okay. So inside of 30 miles, once <clears throat> the runway comes within 30 miles, I'm going to go ahead and, and it seems like this path is off. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go open descent. We'll try to get down a little bit. This D cell, see that D? That's going to slow us right up to green dot. But that's too, too close into the airport. Uh, something that just, it's a little kind of a bug in Aerofly. Fueler is supposed to be 7,000 feet, but we want to get down and slow down. So I'm going to pull for open descent, open descent, thrust idle. And I left the speed managed. 
So what I want to do here is get right on down, pull some speed brakes out here. It is faithful to the fact that you can't have full speed brakes unless the autopilot's disengaged. You'll notice those aren't full speed brakes there. Co-pilot. What's our descent rate? 2400. Just get it right on down. All right, I'm going to go ahead and activate the approach phase now. Now watch the speed target. Ready? Boom. It lights up 135. Right? But now... It's going to slow us right on down to green dot speed. I'm going to stick it in vertical speed, actually. Vertical speed, speed 1500. Now, green dot is below VLS right now, and there's a reason for that, because I have the spoilers out. So if I put the spoilers away... because I might need them again. Go ahead and get them spoilers back out. Just want to get down and slow down here. Barely, barely holding. Probably going to climb the speed a little bit here. Just want to get it down to go here. Bring up the landing system. 18 miles for touchdown. We're well below the glide, <clears throat> so we can level right on out at 2,000. Stable. Outstar. Okay, now we're going to see this do its thing. So it's capturing the altitude. The ECAM minimal has come up for landing. So I'm going to put the spoilers away. And you'll see it stabilize at green dot. And once I get to green dot, so the target speed is that green dot, right? That's the minimum clean speed. And you'll notice we'll be about five and a half to seven degrees pitch up. I'm below VFE next. That's that little equal sign. So I could put the first notch of flaps out at any moment. So speed out nav. Now look at it. It's looking to catch up to green dot. It's going to stabilize that green dot. I'm going to go... Flaps one, and you see the slats coming out there. Oh, wrong one. No flaps, just slats, right? Slats are in. Now it's going to target S speed, which is 180, which is perfect for, you know, what we normally do. Now it's going to maintain S speed, and I'm going to put out flaps two as we get there. And I'm actually going to, it's going to target it's going to target F speed. It's not supposed to do this actually until the gear's down. So I'm going to arm the approach, arm the second autopilot. So we got Loke, Cat 3 Dual, AP1 plus 2, Glide Blue. I'm just going to hold that 180 for a little bit here. And now you can actually switch the landing system if you just so desire. But I was told by the pilots they usually leave this on and use the dots here similar to what we have in infinite flight so right now it would target f speed for flaps two okay so lax is off in front of us should be a pretty good view out the right side here 
just want to make sure I can disconnect the autopilot when I'm ready. We'll do that at 500 feet because it's an ILS approach. You can see the buildings in LA. Downtown LA should be just off the wing there somewhere. Let's see if we can see it. There it is. It's pretty cool, huh? So here comes the glide. So we should see glide star and glide slope here momentarily. All right. Okay, so we're one dot above the glide. Glide star. It's going to start drifting down. Okay, so now we're going to go gear down and the gear is tied to arming the spoilers flaps three manage the speed now when flaps are three flaps full flaps coming out to full Okay, we're looking for a thousand feet. I'm gonna stabilize at VAP here. Following these flight directors, I'll show you this. Right, super important that we get something like this in infinite flight someday. Gives you pitch, proper pitch. One thousand. Stable ECAM landing memo. No blue. Status check. Okay, disconnecting at minimums here, which is 200. It's actually supposed to be ECAM, landing memo, no blue, status check. But we're all green. Landing him landing inhibit is on for the alarms. Landing lights are on. Cabin's ready. Oh, the one thing I forgot was auto brake low. Don't need it, but <clears throat> excuse me. And you can see that they have the barrel altitude or the radio altitude five hundred. Five hundred. Stable. We need this button ready. Four hundred. Land. Land green. Three hundred. Let's see if I don't mess this up. Two hundred. Continue. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Okay. Reverse green, roll out. Spoilers. Not necessarily on center line, but let's play it back. Eh, not half bad. So that's how the approach mode works on the Airbus. I've passed some suggestions on to John Goring to see what he thinks about. Let's start a takeoff 2-5, right? Uh, maybe implementing that into in-flight assist in a little bit. So let me just go, like, clear the route. You have to set up the route like this. So 2-5, right? Okay. And let's just say we were going to go to down to San Diego. And two seven, no nine, yeah two seven. Is that what they usually use? Sure, why not? Why not? And then we can just add Docker. 
Weiler. Shape. PV should be here. And then down to San Diego. So I'm not going to fly this whole flight. I'm just going to go ahead and show you what takeoff will do with the Airbus mode. So location's good. We're right on the edge of the runway, right on the button. Navigation's good. So I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm going to get in there and put my parking brake on for starters. And I'm going to just lift everything back up. Okay. So, just go in here. I'm going to just kind of try to, re excuse me, reset the um, init ref KLAX K SAN flight 123. Init B. I'm going to say we're 52 tons. Fifty-two tons. The only other thing I don't like about this is that it's all in tons. I can usually fix that. So uplink to takeoff data. Still thinks 135, 140, 142. But it also gives me a flex 48 because I raised the weight. Confirm takeoff data. I could set flaps 2 if I wanted to. Still the same. Confirm. Um, they, they need to work on that a little bit. I'm just going to go back to flaps 1. And I set my trim at up 0.3. So usually on a flight control page, point three up. Okay, so we're good to go there. Um, sorry, my nose is running. Go ahead and get into arc mode. All right. <clears throat> so the rudder in this is real terrible. It's like super sensitive. Um, so I'm going to go auto brake max. I'm going to go flaps one. I'm going to go signs on, right, and spoilers on, and I'm going to go takeoff config test, takeoff no blue, right, so we're going to do a flex takeoff here, so parking brake is going to come off. And I'm going to show you, excuse me, auto flap retraction, right? Or auto, yeah, auto flap, okay? So we got alt nav, one FD2. Okay, we're good to go. Okay, chrono, chronometer. Stabilize at 50. Stable. Man, flex 48, SRS runway, auto thrust is blue. So SRS is the V2 plus 10 to 15. You can see the rudder's real touchy here. 100 checks. V1, rotate. Positive rate, gear up, nav. Okay, so it's pitching me right on up to hold that V2 plus 10 to 15. But the flex power was too much. Okay, so we're right at 18 degrees. Open climb, what? Oh, that's why. Climb, lever climb, thrust climb, okay. Oop. Thrust climb, S speed, right? It's where I should retract, now watch the flaps. going to auto retract. See that? Yep, overspeed VFE. 
Oops, so thought I had that. So right up to 250 it goes. So that's auto retraction there. Um, cancel the warning. There we go. And it's going to climb at 250 knots with climb power set. Open climb will do the same thing. It will set climb power and then pitch to hold the speed, right? So it's kind of like flight level change in a Boeing. Right? If I go to manage climb, it's going to set the power. And I can't remember. It's pitch for speed, but it will adjust the power if, I believe, necessary. And we'll just climb this up to 10,000 and show you how it does its thing. It'll automatically target the speed. Shafe. And you can actually see it there. That little magenta circle. That's where we're predicted to hit 10,000 feet and be ready to accelerate. So you'll see, once we hit that magenta circle at 10,000, it's going to say, okay, 300 knots. Or it might be 290. Yep. Managed. Managed 250. And you'll see the see it change here to, to either 290 or 300, depending on... I forget how this is set up. I didn't stick the cost index up. I could probably do that. No, it's 999. Okay, so we're 9,000. Coming up to this magenta circle. Stay here. I'll leave my landing lights now. See that? Targets 300 knots by pitching for speed. Leaves the thrust constant, but it pitches for speed. I never did turn my landing lights on. So that's how that works. So you might ask, okay, how do we fix this? An infinite flight. Well, I'm going to show you right now. And this thing still won't go off. It drives me nuts. All right, so how we do that in infinite flight? Ready is, when you are, Captain. Why, thank you. I'm going to go ahead into solo mode here. Go on the button of the runway. Set my weights. All right. Time left, Palm Beach. Gonna set my weights. Flight attendants, take your on seats for takeoff. One zero left. And ladies and ladies and gentlemen, Flaps. my name is Sean, Flaps. and on behalf of the entire crew, I would like to welcome you aboard. They've just closed the aircraft doors, so at this time, I would like to ask you to turn any mobile phones and tablets you may have with you to airplane mode. Please find your seats, fasten your seatbelts, and put your tables to the upright position. Flight attendants, arm doors for departure. Cross check and report. Thank you. So we got 130, V1, 143 for this current weight that we're at for flaps one takeoff. And we're looking to pitch for 158, 143. Oh, sorry, 141. 141. On one way, one zero left. Yes, I'm well aware of that. Thank you. So we want to pitch. So I'm targeting the speed here targeting 158, which is V2 plus 15, right? And for this exercise, 199 is flaps up, 214 is green dot. But we're not going to worry about the green dot on takeoff. That's only if you lose an engine. He's there. Let me set the trim. I usually use about 25. Flaps one. Right? We can't arm our spoilers because they would go out. Spoilers one right. one. Can't arm them for takeoff. Spoilers retracted. Uh, so notice what we're missing here. We're missing a flight director that would pitch, give us pitch command bars. 
So if we had a flight director, it would be set to give us the pitch to 15 to 18 degrees, uh, depending on our speed, and it would hold us at that, right? So, stabilize at 50%, roughly stable. I usually use about 90% and one. On runway one zero left. Yes, thank you, I'm well aware. 90.5, I'm holding in some down stick here, right? 100 knots. Stabilized. Thrust set. V1. Back. Rotate. Rotating. Positive right. Gear up. Alright, now I'm going to pitch up <clears throat> to meet that speed target. Holding this till 1500 feet. Not gonna go below it. Not gonna go above it. I'm just gonna pitch to maintain that speed. Okay, it should be 1520. Okay, positive speed trend. Rust reduction. The idea is that I wouldn't have to do this. It would automatically set that 250. It's going to hold the heading because it's easier. It took a little too much power off. Eight to ten degrees. Number one ninety nine. Flaps zero degrees. Flaps up. All right, eight to ten degrees. for that 250 target. Let's give it a turn to the north here. I apologize, my nose is driving me nuts today. So whatever I wind up at for the pitch, I'm going to lock in at 250 knots. The auto thrust and the climb up to 10,000. So, auto thrust speed, there we go, so I got 31.15, that's about average, right, you could even, there goes my phone, drop it down a notch or two, we're not extremely heavy, only 70% loaded, let's just come around to the west here, over the coastline. You'll have to excuse me, I'm gonna have to blow my nose. All right, sorry about that. So once we hit 10K, we'll be looking for that acceleration. Still got to burn off about a thousand pounds here before I can get into max lane. Well, 900 pounds. Should be able to do that with. Uh, so let's make it. Let's make it 280, and we'll see if we can get out to Agoya and come on. Come on back around for a um, for a landing. <coughs> Excuse me.
Okay, 10,000, good to go, right? So we're gonna go auto thrust off, reduce the climb rate, bump the speed target to 300, maybe give it a little bit of, give it a little bit of thrust here so that we can get on up, get that speed trend arrow moving in the right direction. Settle it out at about six degrees, five to six degrees pitch. That's a little too much. There we go. All right, just kind of letting the aircraft do things naturally. Show fuel used is zero. It's very strange. Okay. Come into 300 knots. Auto thrust. Let it stabilize. Just level out here at 14,000. And what do we get on the map? Where the heck are we? We gonna go here yet? Still need to burn off. Oh, I took off from Lauderdale. I thought I was at. Uh... <clears throat> so yeah, that would be a Goya, right? Somewhere way out here. Yeah, there's a Goya. Be way too high for a. Uh... Way too high for an approach. In a few moments, the flight attendants will be passing around the cabin to offer you hot or cold drinks, as well as a snack. Alcoholic drinks are also available One. at a nominal charge. Now, sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. So, let's see what we got here. 349. I mean, I could tweak the weight myself. If I really wanted to, let's see, nav. All right, so let's say we're descending, right? And we're going to go ahead and get down to 8,000 and activate the approach, right? Green dot at this weight, right? Green dot speed at this weight is 199. So I'm going to set up for landing. The wind's next to nothing. So I'm going to set up max landing weight. Green dot's 214. 146. There's our weight. Submit. So 213 knots. We're looking at a VAP of 142. All right? S speed is 199. Might be 198. 198 for S, right? So let's bring it right on down to 2,000 feet. I'm going to go ahead and dump out a little bit of weight just to make sure we get 46.6. We might be able to do that. Coming in right at max landing weight. Okay, 11,000, we're going to target 250. Thrust idle. Flat spoilers extended. Start getting those spoilers going so that we don't bust the restriction here. Thirty seconds to drop thirty knots. That doesn't happen. What you do is you bring it up gradually so that it slows your rate down a little bit more. That's all you got to do. Bring it up gradually, slow your rate. Remember, you got 260 as a cushion before you drop through 10. All right, 
he's going to tell us to watch our speed. Well, maybe not, because we're slowing. Right. Spoilers retracted. Let off on the spoilers there. We'll be coming in right about max landing weight, like the touchdown will be at max landing weight. Flat spoilers extended. So I'm going to go spoilers retract. I'm going to simulate that I armed the approach mode now. And I'm going to set 147 as the ref, or what is it? Yeah, 142 and 137. So we want 142 here. Flight spoilers extended. Spoilers retract. So I'm going to arm the approach mode. Green dot. It's 214. Flight spoilers extended. So we're coming back to 214. Of course it's out of range, I'm out by Agoya, that's why. Spoilers retracted. Now we'll hold this green dot, and this is where we can put out the first, you know, it's the minimum clean speed. I'm going to stick in a direct to Holland here and attempt to stick it in Nav. Okay, so Holland to Pion should be 190 and then 170. Now I'm not targeting the actual speeds like the Airbus would, I'm just targeting standard approach speeds. I like to redirect like this because it gives you a better, um, a better track towards where you're going if you do it when you're straight. time and do that so at any point in time here we can go flaps one and if we did it would target 198 so flaps one Flaps one. Flaps one. So this is what the Airbus would do. It would target 198. And then we could sit there at 198. At or below 198. That was not out of range. How many miles? 31 miles. So we got four miles, four track miles to go, a thousand to go. So 
So anywhere in here we can go for the next set of flaps. And you'll notice it's a 2.5 degree angle once you're level. And see we're a little bit slow here on the speed but it's about a two and a half degree angle at each speed. They design things for pitch angle, body angle, uh, angle of attack. I hate this, uh, there we go, clean it up a little bit. There we go, that'll put us right on, right on 2.5, see that? A little high, maybe three. Okay, so we're set up for 190, 170. F speed is 151, so we won't make it to that. But we've got below S for Pion, and then above F for Novi, and then at Packy. Is it Packy? Yep. So it's at Novi will go into the landing configuration. Twenty-four miles, set nav one. There we go. So, coming up on Holland here, let's go ahead and go flaps two. Flaps two. Flaps two. Now watch our pitch angle come down here on the PFD. See how it's pushing over now? Big configuration change. It's going to drop down to 190 for the next segment. So we got 19 track mile, 18 track miles to touchdown. And we're just about at landing weight. Because we're in starting to get into the high drag configuration. Watch for the glide slope to start coming down. Probably just after Pion. Or is it Novi? Uh, nope, Novi is the fix. So yeah, it should be 2000 at Novi. Oh, I'd have to look at the chart. I don't have a chart handy right this second. Shame on me. It is... 1800 at Novi, 2500 at Pion. So we should start seeing motion any second here. I will be slowing up to 170 and I'm going to start dropping down at Pion. Okay, there it is. Start dropping down just at a slow rate across Pion 2500. Now, in the A321, the auto thrust, you still have to give it the punch. And I like to do that here, just so you can avoid too much 
um, too much pitch change. So these are just little tricks that you can use in Infinite Flight where you start down on the glide before you actually meet it. I can't believe this thing's not coming down yet. It was supposed to be 1,800, so it's 500 feet, and then 600 feet almost, 580 feet in a minute and 20 seconds. There it is, glide slope's alive. So I'll start going 200. And the idea, little infinite flight trick here, the idea is to get to be, you know, just about a quarter dot below for when we drop the rest of the flaps and get into the landing configuration. Okay, quarter dot high now. Go down to 500. You can see we need to add in a little pitch trim. Go to six, seven, eight hundred. And there we go. Gear down. Gear down. Flaps three. Flaps three. Flaps three. Flaps full. Flaps full. And see, I'm meeting the glide slope right here. And as my power comes back on, I should be dead on the glide slope. Coming out of nav and heading, I've got manual control. The only thing left is the auto thrust. I need to get some more pitch trim in. Kind of stabilize me on path here. There we go, right about there. A little high. Calibrates what I need to do. Oh boy, easy now. A little bit high at this point. It's like we're a little bit right, a little bit to the left of course too. Bring it back to the right slightly. Get her going downhill a little bit more. Okay, stabilized. A little bit of heavy sink rate there. I'm going to bring it back out gently. That uh, should be good. Approaching one zero left. Okay, I'm on visual reference now. I'm watching how the runway changes. I just, I think I have a bad calibration here, but we'll see. There we go. That's it. 500. Stable at 500. Auto thrust is going to come out at 200. 400. All right, at minimums basically. Approaching minimums. 300. Okay. Yeah, I get a bad calibration here. I'm minimums. Almost. Minimums. 200. 100. Okay, 50 over 50, the numbers. 40, 30, 20, retard, 10. retard. Landing spoilers extended. And I got the applause. Dear friends, it's how you do that. For your safety and comfort, please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened until the captain turns off the fastened seatbelt sign. This will indicate that we have parked at the gate and that it's safe for you to move about. At this time, you may use your cellular phones if you wish. 
Please check around your seat for any personal belongings you may have brought on board with you. And please use caution when opening the overhead bins, as heavy articles may have shifted around during the flight. On behalf of the entire crew, I'd like to thank Slash you for joining us on this trip, it. and we're looking forward to seeing you on board again in the near future. Have a pleasant day. Approaching runway 28 right. All right. So I hope that helped everybody out. Let's take a look at the landing real quick. See, see, feel like I stuck that landing. Feel like I stuck the landing. Let's see. It was tricky. I kind of was holding the device a little funny. And I got a little bit low here. Right on the numbers, or right on the bricks. Let's see what our pitch was. I prefer to use the HUD for pitch. Let's see if we can catch the, see if we can catch the uh, landing rate. 150 on the landing rate, a little bit low on the pitch, but uh, other than that, I hope this stream has helped you guys out, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.